Riverdale Elementary teacher Amy Hines is teaching her students through a strategy called the walking classroom. Her students get to listen, learn, and walk all at the same time. I'm Jennifer Eddins, and this is Spotlight on Schools. Hines classroom at River Dell Elementary isn't always confined to four walls. Her students walk and learn, a new teaching strategy that is sure to go the distance. So we have these walk kits, they're podcasts, and there's over a hundred of them on there relating to different social studies, science, and language arts concepts that we cover in fifth grade, so it matches our curriculum. And whenever we are teaching something in class that relates to one of those, I like to try and pull it then and use it in a timely manner. And then what we'll do is I'll tell the kids in advance so that they make sure they wear tennis shoes and bring their earbuds that day. And I try to, you know, schedule it for a nice day. And then we'll go and depending on the length of the podcast, we'll walk a lap and a half to two laps around the school as they listen. Hello, my name is Sophie and I'm joined by Jack and we're your student teachers for today. And we're joined by our teacher, Mrs. Fenn, here in the walking classroom. Why do you think women can't? I know that um, in that day, um, I, women weren't allowed to vote, and women weren't allowed to do a lot of stuff that men could. Do you think today, if we had the Pony Express, they'd let women do it? Probably. Yeah. Today they listen to the Pony Express, and then after they finish the podcast, while we're still finishing our lap, um, they talk to other kids about things that they heard and they learned and then when we get back in the room there are either comprehension quizzes I could use that have like 10 questions where you could see what they remembered from it but I like to just share out things that they heard that they found interesting and then I lead them to other concepts if they didn't talk about those at all so that we can go over the main points of the podcast. Let's see how many different things we can remember from the podcast today. So what is one thing you remember? They really just enjoy getting exercise. Um, we walk fairly fast when we do it because part of the program is also to fight childhood obesity. And so by walking quickly gets their heart rate up and that helps them also remember stuff better because uh, movement relates to learning. And so all those things are just great for the kids. I feel that it's a really good idea because I heard that if you exercise while you're walking, it helps you focus more, especially when you get back in the classroom. What prompted you to start the walking classroom lessons in your class? Well, I noticed that some of my kids um, really learned best by moving around and it sort of, being in a classroom, it made it harder for them to actively learn. And so I was listening actually one day to NPR and they were talking about the walking classroom, which I had never heard of before. And it just sort of intrigued me, the fact you could be out walking and uh, doing lessons, because I would go and teach outside a lot and do a lot of active things, but this one sounded completely different. So I went online and I looked up the walking classroom and I read about it and they had a few sample podcasts on there and I listened to them and they were just really interesting and entertaining and also informative. So I looked into it and I saw that it cost a significant amount of money, so I decided to write a grant for it. Research suggests that students retain more information while being active as opposed to sitting in a desk all day. It, just like today, for example, if I had just read, read a passage on the Pony Express, which would have been very easy to do and required less prep, they would not have been able to tell me as many interesting things about it as if they just read it when they're outside walking. The lesson was about the Pony Express. It's very strange that they really only used orphans. I think it's pretty sad. I learned a lot of things, things like they used Mustangs in the Pony Express and that you had to be under a certain weight to be in the Pony Express so you could go fast. The youngest person was 11, the oldest person was 40. They had to risk their life to do it. In addition to helping students retain information, the lessons improve classroom behavior. And I've also noticed behavior-wise, I have less behavior problems. They don't 
Uh, they want to go out there and do it, and if they do goof off while doing the walk-in classroom, they have to sit out the next one, and they know that, so they're very focused and they're listening and attentive, because because they moved earlier in the class period, I can do other things where they're sitting down and they can focus a little better because they've already gotten some of their wiggles out. Learning is the primary objective, but the walk-in classroom is also a weapon in the fight against childhood obesity. I really like getting outside with the kids because I do want to encourage them to really be active and mobile. When I was young, I had trouble with childhood obesity myself, so I really want to help to fight that and to give them other ways to exercise. And I know a lot of adults listen to podcasts while they're exercising, and so it's a good transition over in that way as well. Well, I can focus a lot better. It's much better than just sitting down because after a while it just gets repetitive and it's also exercise and it keeps you healthy. I like this kind of lesson because it helps me get exercise and learn. And it just makes me happy. Well, it's like great to get like ready for the class and get focused. Um, you get exercise, it's fun. Ms. Hines hopes other teachers will take advantage of educational grant money and get students moving and learning. Maybe I just want to encourage teachers to write grants because like when I first looked at the program, my first thought was, I can't use this program, it's too expensive. And then, because I'd never written a grant before, I didn't really think about that opportunity or I thought grant writing would be very difficult. And so when I just had someone help me who'd already done a grant before, that was very helpful. And it actually wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be, especially since the grant involved technology in a different way than a lot of people use it. They really love it. They love getting outside. They love, you know, feeling like, when they walk back up past other classes and they have you know, their earbud in, they just feel so cool. I don't know, like their faces just light up. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're happy to have you along. Happy, happy trails! trails.